What's up everyone, Patrick here, welcome back. And in this next video, another question dealing with inverses, we have to explain why f of x equals f of inverse x for this function over here, f of x equals negative x plus b, where the b is just any kind of real number, any kind of constant. So notice this is just a line here with a slope of negative one, and then the b value is gonna be the y intercept, and that b value can be anything. So I'm going to explain this question in two different ways. I'm gonna show you first algebraically why it works, and then I'm gonna explain it graphically why it works as well. Now, if we take this function f of x equals negative x plus b like that, when we're finding the inverse of a function, what are the steps? So we have y equals negative x plus b. This and this are the same thing. And the first thing to do is to interchange the x and y's. So what we would do is this y would become an x, and then this x would become a y. And then what we wanna do is isolate for that y. And then when we isolate for it, that's gonna give us the inverse. So notice that if we were to isolate for this y, we would bring it over to make it positive, then the x we would bring over, and what would we end up with? We would end up with the exact same function that we started with, right? This here would be the inverse, right? So the inverse is negative x plus b when the function is negative x plus b. So it could be anything. So let's say f of x is negative x plus five, right? If we run the same process, interchange, notice that y equals negative x plus five, right? So the inverse ends up being negative x plus five. So no matter what b value you use here, as long as it's a real number, the function is gonna equal the inverse. Now it has to be that, there can't be any other slope. So you can't have like negative two x plus five then it's not gonna work because notice then we'll have negative two x. Uh, y equals negative two x plus five, that's the function. Notice when we interchange it, run the same process, two y equals negative x plus five, and then we divide both sides by two. Notice that that would be the inverse and we would end up with a completely different line than this. So it has to be in this format, the slope has to be negative one in order for this to hold. Now, that's how you show it algebraically. Why does it make sense graphically? Well, if you remember, how do we find the inverse graphically? Well, we interchange the x and y values, the coordinates, Another way to say it is that we reflect it over the line y is equal to x, right? So for example, um, if we have like a quadratic, let's say over here, if we reflect that over this line, we'd end up with a sideways parabola over here. So let's say this was like, the vertex was at zero and three, this would be at three and zero, right? Interchanging those and then interchanging all those coordinates, it's like reflecting this over that line, y equals x, and we end up with this sideways parabola. So we've gone over that in videos before. So the function, then the inverse they're a reflection of each other over the line y equals x. Well, with the line y equals negative x plus b, watch what's gonna happen. Notice that this line y equals x, it has a slope of one. And then notice that this line has a slope of negative one. Now one and negative one, they are negative reciprocals of each other. 
right? One is like one over one. Well, the reciprocal of that is just one over one again, and then the negative reciprocal, we would just add a negative there. So because this slope and this slope are negative reciprocals of each other, it means that the slopes are perpendicular. And so it means that this line, no matter where you draw it, it's always going to be perpendicular to the line y is equal to x. So if we draw the line over here, or maybe we draw the line over here, or over here, right? Wherever we draw the line, there's an infinite amount of lines that we can draw. As long as this line has a slope of negative 1, it's always going to be perpendicular to the line y is equal to x. And then the b value is changing. So here, 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 right? Depending on what b value we choose is going to depend on which one of these lines we're looking at. But no matter which one we're looking at, it's always going to be perpendicular to y is equal to x. And so notice that what happens with all these lines when we take the portion above y is equal to x and reflect it, or the portion below y is equal to x and reflect it. If we take this portion and reflect it over y is equal to x, we're going to end up with this portion. And if we take this portion and reflect it, we'd end up with that portion. So taking any of these lines and reflecting them over the line y is equal to x, we're going to end up with the same line. Right? Same thing over here. It doesn't matter which one of these, right? All of them, when we reflect it, it's going to be the exact same line. And so that's the intuition of how this works graphically. Because to get the inverse, you always reflect it over the line y is equal to x. But if we take any of these lines and reflect them over y is equal to x, we're going to end up with the same line. Right? So that's how you can show it algebraically, and that's how it intuitively makes sense graphically.